What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about one of the new releases that I was pretty excited to get. Fortunately for a brief moment, FragranceNet had some testers with the 37% off code. You can get it for 47 bucks. A bunch of us grabbed it, I being one of them. And uh, we're going di to deep dive a little bit more into Coach Green, the newest release in the Coach for Men line. So stay tuned. So, like I said, it was a tester. So it's a brown tester box. Coach Green, 100 ml. Eau de Toilette. Nothing special here. Shows you how to open the atomizer. For those of you that don't know, it is a twist top. A little bit of a gimmick. It's closed. Now it's open. So you do have a label on the back with the notes in two different languages. If I could get it to focus, there we go. Woody Fruity Green. Kiwi, Rosemary, Crystal Moss. Interesting note breakdown, but same Coach for Men bottle that you've gotten used to, just with a green gradient with this forest green Coach tab and the atomizer. Decent mist. Let's talk about the scent. So the first thing most people are going to think about this is Parfums de Marley Greenly. And sure, at the top a little bit, the Kiwi can come across with kind of that apple and wood type of feel because there is a woodiness to this. Even though it just says that whatever crystallized moss is, some sort of oak moss note, with rosemary, which does offer an, an essence of green to really kind of give this herbal feel <clears throat> without making it too spicy. There is a nice fresh spicy feel. The rosemary kind of stars in this fragrance. The kiwi does offer this light fruity sweet tone that is kind of grounded and counterbalanced with that rosemary. But as it settles down, this was the bug that was put in my ear in a live stream and it makes complete sense. It starts out kind of greenly and dries down kind of green sauvage. Because Embroxin's not listed, nor Ambergris or Amberwood or anything, but just like Coach Platinum and Coach for Men, they have that, that Dior Sauvage feel to their dry downs. I think there's some Embroxin in here too that's just not being listed in the formula because it does smell like basically... So it starts out fruity and green and it starts to settle into green and woodsy. Then it settles into lightly green, lightly woodsy Ambroxan. That's pretty much what you can expect from this fragrance. Now, I don't say that in a negative manner. I like it. I like it. I have nine sprays on currently as we speak. Five around the neck, two on each forearm. Loving it. We'll get to performance in a little bit. I did spray a little bit on the heavier side uh, than I typically do because... It's definitely a very fresh fragrance. Not as weak as Coach Blue, but we'll get to it in a minute. But if you're expecting their take on Parfums de Marley Greenly, like a lot of people assumed when it was announced, you're not far off here. Like I said, it will remind you a little bit of it at the top. Fruit, green fruits and woods. Yeah, it's pretty much what the top is. Green, fruity, woody. But it's a different green fruit. It's different greens. And the wood here is a cedar type of note. And then it dries down into, like I said, a greener Sauvage. Because there is an Embroxen feel. It's quite lovely. It's nice. It's pleasant. It doesn't have too much of a shower gel feel. It's more of a synthetic ambergris than straight up Embroxen, I think. Um, but it smells nice. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's just nice. It's a nice smelling fragrance. It's not the worst of the four. I actually put this second among the four men's fragrances in the line. You have Coach for Men, you have Coach Platinum, you have Coach Blue, and you have Coach Green. I rank them accordingly to Coach for Men number one, the original, then Coach Green, then Coach Platinum, then Coach Blue. Believe it or not, Blue is the one I ranked the fourth, which isn't a bad thing. It's just of the group, it's the one I like the least, but I like this almost as much as the original. I think it was a really good release in the line. It's not going to offend anybody. It's also not going to blow anybody's mind. But in the sub $50 price point, this is a solid pickup for a lot of people. Now in the realm of performance, what a lot of people are going to be most concerned with, because most fragrances smell nice, right? Shout out to my man EQ. He's absolutely right when he said that. 90% of fragrances at least smell good. This one definitely smells really good, I think. Uh, five to seven hour range. 
is what I've been experiencing through testing, test sprays, and full wearing, five to seven hours. It's varied in that range, which is a solid range. For the price point, for the scent profile, I think that's a good, nice little sweet spot for this. Now this is without spraying fabric. This is just strictly on skin. Projection is on the heavier side in the first hour, obviously, slightly beyond arm's reach. You're not filling any rooms with this one. I wouldn't recommend heavily spraying and bathing in this, but you could do a lot worse, honestly. If you're a little trigger happy, this isn't the worst fragrance for those that get a little trigger happy. It's really not. It's not the lightest thing, but it's not the dent most dense fragrance either. It's not crazy strong, but it's not super weak. So after about the hour and a half mark, that's when the projection is going to really start to calm down, get a bit close to the skin with a moderate to mild sillage. It's not just constantly hitting me, reminding me it's there. I got to look for it sometimes. Once in a while, I'll get a light whiff reminding me it's there when I'm not looking for it, when I turn and move a certain way. But even just kind of lightly doing this, getting in the realm of where the sprays are, it's pretty easy to detect. That's why it's not quite mild. It's not super weak in its sillage in the scent bubble you're going to have for the majority of the life it's on your skin. It's a little bit better than that, where you get light whiffs here and there. Not going to overwhelm you, not going to stay under your nose the whole time, which can be a good thing. You need fragrances like this in your collection. So across the board, I would say average to slightly above average, pretty much average for the most part in all three categories of performance. Final thoughts on Coach for Men Green. I think it was a good addition to the line. I think it rounds off everything because you have the most versatile, most well-rounded in Coach, Men, Coach for Men. You have the sweeter one, pineapple and vanilla and stuff like that with Coach Platinum. You have the freshy, the blue, more oceanic feel, even though it's kind of an absinthe bomb. It's lime, it's fresh, it's citrus. You have the blue one. Now you have one that's more based around some more herbs and woods and stuff like that. You have your green release. Now they need a red release that's around fruits and things like that. That's probably what's going to happen next. Mark my words. Call, you heard it here first. Coach Red's going to be the next time they release one. It's going to be Coach Red. But I do think this was a very good release. Overall, I think it's a 7.5 out of 10 fragrance. It's not a must-have. It's not. If you're a fan of the line, though, it might be a must-have for you. If this is your style, the green woody fragrance is a little bit of a fruity nuance to it. Very mass appealing. Super easy to like. I haven't gotten a compliment from it yet, but I'm sure that may be the inevitable one day. Maybe it'll get a lot. Maybe it'll never get one, but I would scent profiles like this have the aptitude to kind of garner stuff like that. You know, obviously it's all situational. Nothing's guaranteed, but it's an easy to like fragrance. It really is. It's very good crowd pleaser. That's why it's ranked as a very good 7.5 out of 10. Well, that's my thoughts and feelings on the newest release in the Coach for Men line, Coach Green. Was super happy when this got announced. Was super happy to get a tester for under 50 bucks. Very happy with the fragrance. I like it. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to reach for it here and there. I think it's great for the spring and summer, early fall. If you're in a warmer climate, you could wear this year round. Honestly. It's some pretty good stuff. Like I said, not going to blow anybody's mind. But it's a pretty good release. It really is. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe because I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. How many of you jumped in on the $47 testers when it jumped out? How many of you have tried it? How many of you have yet to try it? You can always head to a coach store, and since it's their newest release, they're probably going to have a tester exactly like this sitting there for you to spray it on your skin, check it out, see if it's for you. As you can tell, they are sporadically hitting discounters already, hit fragrance net testers already. I don't know where you can get it right now for under retail, but... Just keep your eyes out. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on Coach for Men Green and give it a spray now, real good chance you'll thank me later. If you like the mass appealing stuff, then it's certain. Have a good one, guys.